guys? It's your boy Corey. It's your boy John. And welcome back to the Artistry Drop where we feature stories from today's rising artists. Let's go. If you like being inspired, don't miss out on our weekly episodes. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell notification to be notified when we drop new episodes. Yes, sir. Guys, we are going to dive right in. Our guest today is a model and head chef at one of LA's hottest new restaurants, all while catering private events for LA's rich and famous. She's been featured in Voyage LA, Shout Out LA, and The Portrait Project magazine for her unique approach to her career and side hustle. Guys, please welcome Pearl Steffi. Let's go. Thank you for coming on the show. Great to have you here. It's been a minute since I've seen you, so yeah. it's definitely nice seeing you. How how's everything been? Because I know you've you uh when I first moved out here and we kind of linked up, you were already moving. Oh, I think it was London, right? Or yeah, it was, uh, was um, it Portland. Portland, Portland, Portland. That's Damn right, Portland. London. I don't know why I was thinking. I wish it was London. That was, I, guess, I guess my mind was so blurry. Like, that was, yeah. that was almost three years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, Portland. So, and then you came back. So and then I, I came back. Yeah, okay. I was actually, oh, Pearl's back? So, yeah. Yeah. No, how, how was the experience over there, though? Um... It was nice, but Portland is not for me. Yeah, I, yeah like the weather. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love the sunny LA weather. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we're from Seattle, so yeah. yeah I, I told her, yeah, because I, I even was telling her, I was like, you should have moved to Seattle because right. when she was trying to, or when she did tell me she was going to Portland, uh, I was like, oh, Seattle's just literally yeah, like right, an right hour, there, a few yeah. hours from there. Yeah. I was like, you should check out Seattle instead yeah. of like Portland. But no, I mean, I definitely glad you're back here in LA. This is where you need to be. I know. Right? You know? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Were you, what made you change change your mind? Was it just like Portland wasn't doing this? Just the or weather? Yeah. Was it like, just the weather? The it main? was the weather. I mean, I love the nature, mm-hmm. but um, being in LA is like just more opportunities. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like when it comes to like restaurant mm-hmm. yeah. and like modeling, yeah. like yeah. just way that's more. Yeah. That's yeah. why we got yeah. out of Seattle. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 That's why we're yeah. here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like I said, you know, Seattle and Portland is literally the same thing. You know, the vi- environment is almost the same. It's yeah. just, I think Portland is... Um, definitely, it's a little bit older. Right, like, right. I would say, like, because Seattle yeah. is definitely building up more to... Uh, match up with LA, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I Seattle's on the come up, I of would course. say, you know. So, course, yeah. yeah, like I said, I I definitely feel you though because Seattle just wasn't where we needed to be for you know what we're trying to do with yeah. filmmaking yes. and you know the podcast. Now the podcast, you know, we had talked about for a while, but um, you know, we moved down here mainly, of course, for the filmmaking, yeah. like I told you, and photography and yeah. stuff like that. But this was a new venture for us, and <laughs> this is the perfect place to come because we can meet other artists and creators just yeah. like you, you know. Th- yeah. Nobody else. I don't know how many people we would actually bring on the show if we lived in Seattle. So. I know, right? Yeah, so it would be it, very rare. Yeah. We would probably be have to doing like Zoom. Yeah, Zoom for, for yeah, other people. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. Right, yeah, yeah so, exactly. So the fact that we're here, yeah, this is perfect as well. So yeah, sir. you know, uh, before we dive in a little bit more with Pearl's story, we do got to get into the drink of the day because this thing is looking beautiful. Dude, yeah, this is fire. So good. Thank yeah. you. So Thank you. So yes, <laughs> this might be the best drink that we've that I've ever made. Actually, and I, I've yeah. tried it, but the present. The presentation, yeah. yeah. Well, I knew I this. Know. Yeah. You know, Pearl's our first chef that we ever <laughs> had on the show, is. so I had to really up my game as well yes, as do. a bartender. <laughs> I'm not a real bartender, but I, I started, you know, um, making these cocktails. With the artist, yeah, yeah, with the artist job that we started a year ago. Yeah. So I've had a lot of practice and been doing a lot of research. Mm-hmm. So now this is what the creation has made that like over time. I can't wait yeah. to try yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is our first dessert cocktail. This is the s'mores um, s'mores cocktail. Um, I put it with um, Kahlua, which mm-hmm. is a uh, coffee infused um, alcohol. Really Kahlua. Yeah. And then um, Screwball, which is peanut butter um, uh, infused uh uh, whiskey, I believe. Whiskey. Yeah, and then yeah, I. Yeah, we took a shot of that, and yeah. oh my god, that yeah. shit is so bad. Yeah, and then I also <laughs> put some whiskey in there, and then I also Ooh. mix it with some milk and some uh, whipped cream, of course. Inside, shook it up, and then I topped it off with uh, the whipped cream and then the uh, toasted marshmallows. marshmallows. Yeah, yeah and like some sugar. rosemary and some graham crackers, Ooh, all okay. rimmed, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then I prepped the cup too, you know. Yeah, I, I dipped it though. in chocolate, um, and I put some graham crackers on top, and then froze the cup and then I put everything all together. Hey, That's let's go. Awesome. That shit looks oh good. Gosh, well, let's so go ahead good. and take a yes. cheers. 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 
Yeah, we do to need to uh, <laughs> mix it up first. Mix oh, it up do? before, yeah, because the whipped cream needs is acting like a creamer. Okay. For the, okay. Almost like for a coffee. I really like the presentation a lot. The presentation. Thank I mean, you. Yeah, 10 out of 10. You know, 10 out of 10 oh, from, from the master chef. chef. From the master chef here. Thank guys. you. Yeah, I'm going to try okay. this. Oh my God. It's a little strong. Be careful. Ooh, that's good. That is good, though. That's good. Yeah, that is good. Good. That's really good. Got to take a bite of the graham cracker. You're welcome. Good wow, good job. Thank you. Good job. Thank from you. the chef. From the chef. <laughs> from the chef. Yeah. Yeah. From the chef. All right, well. Thank you again for the drink of the day, because this shit is really good. Yeah, good. thank you. And, um, okay, we're going to dive right in and get into Pearl's story. So, you know, you did move here from the Philippines. Uh, of course, you know, like, we, we had talked about that, you know, uh, one, once I moved here and we linked up and stuff. Yeah. But I don't think we talked about transitioning to American life. Like, how was it transitioning from Philippines to here? Uh, it was like... Um it was like a total culture shock for me. Oh, really? Like, especially here in LA, it's such a big city. When yeah. I moved mm-hmm. here, I was like so scared because I don't know anyone. Mm-hmm. I don't have any friends, no family. Yeah. I moved here like just a suitcase. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know like where to go, you yeah. know, like what's the safe place mm-hmm. to like, mm-hmm. where is like the safest place to yeah. like live yeah. here in LA. Dang. And, um, it was just to me. It was just like, like shocking to yeah. like from an island, yeah, from right. a really island. small island, yeah. and then y- you're in LA. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so why'd you, why'd you move over here in the first place? Um, I got a job offer from this restaurant in Beverly Hills. Oh, okay. And from uh, the Philippines. From the Philippines. Wow. Yeah. So um, I got the job. That's one of the reason why. Okay. Why I moved here. Mm-hmm. I was like, I think it's a great opportunity to mm-hmm. be in LA as a chef. You know, like so many different cultures. Like yeah. the food yeah. scene. It's like a melting pot. In yeah, here it's in a melting LA. pot yeah. Yeah. when it comes to food scene, mm-hmm. and also mm-hmm. like you know you can like do modeling at the same time. Yeah. Right. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And that's so rare for right. someone to hit you from Beverly Hills when you're yeah, in the Philippines. Yeah, that is crazy. Like, yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, even when you submitted, like, your resume or application, they did see you're in the Philippines, too. So, it yeah. is super crazy that somebody's like, you know, she's got the talent, though. Let's just bring her on over yeah. here. How did you actually overcome, though, like, the whole culture shock once you got to L.A.? Because, of course, yeah, I know... You know, even for us, we had a culture shock just coming from a, you know, Seattle. Seattle. Seattle's a big city, but that's what we think, you know. Of course, when we got to L.A., it's a lot bigger. Yeah. It, it, you know, so, like, once we saw how it was here, we even were culture shocked. There's a lot, you know, di- a lot of different people, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of, you know, things work different here. So, yeah. right. how did you actually uh, overcome that culture shock once you got to L.A.? Oh, it was... Um like working at a restaurant too it's like when i got there i was like the only like asian mm. <laughs> like and like everyone like speaks spanish yeah. but but at the same time i was like like tagalog which mm-hmm. is like it's pretty similar to, yeah. to, yeah, to spanish, spanish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and to me it wasn't really that hard to like to like communicate to like the people mm-hmm. here because oh i can like understand yeah. what they're talking about it was funny yeah. because they didn't know that filipinos can understand spanish and like <laughs> our words are like yeah. pretty similar to spanish it is. Right, right. and sometimes they like they talk you know do like, they talk shit they talk about, shit about okay. it and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and like, you're like what did you just say I, I was like um i understand how yeah. you know, <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. but it was like to me i was just like pretending the whole time like oh it's cool like yeah. you yeah. know yeah. like yeah. it's fine and how was your like english when you first came did you just speak uh pretty uh, fluent English? Yeah, um, so in the Philippines, they, they really, teach, you, like, right? they yeah. teach mm-hmm. us to like speak mm-hmm. English oh, okay. like yeah. at a very young age. Yeah. So, like, but you weren't ready for the, it's the like Spanish. Taglish. Yeah, yeah. Taglish, yeah. Yeah. Taglish, Taglish, but okay. I wasn't like uh, like aware that it's yeah. like Spanish. Spanish, Spanish. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you call it. Yeah. So, and then, you know, once you got here, like, um, did you kind of venture out more often by yourself and you know to see how LA life was you know especially being here in America like did you kind of venture out more on your own to see how things were or did you like you know you eventually found friends like working in the uh, culinary industry and you kind of went out and then that that's how you more overcame like the culture shock yeah um when I moved here I was already um 
doing like social media mm-hmm. influencer mm. so i like like met like a lot of people through through instagram mm. and then i also like got invited to some like influencer event and that's mm. how i made like connection and like meet really cool people yeah who became you know really good friends of mine yeah and um also like helped me with like modeling yeah and stuff like that yeah that's instagram cool. definitely helps because you know even for me that's how we met of course yeah. we met through instagram you yeah. know and uh uh you definitely i i always i've mentioned this on the podcast a couple times already it's like if you're intending to move to a different city start building up like you know a following from that area already yeah. or start right. connecting with people from that area already mm-hmm. because once you move here and mm-hmm. then you just start connecting with people it's, it might be a little bit slower but right. you know for me, when I moved down to LA, I had already intended to move down here around like 2015. But you know, every time there was always something in the road that would block me from coming down here. But and then 2019 finally got down here. So I had already started around 2015 on connecting with people yeah. in LA. And then, you know, once I was like, okay, I'm officially moving. I, now, I, you know, we already have these people uh, following me and right? I can reach out and be like, yeah. okay, let's, you know, right. I'm moving down to LA, let's connect, let's yeah. do a photo shoot or, you know, whatever. And I found it so easier, uh, a lot easier doing it that way than yeah. once you get here. So it was a good right. thing that you had already kind of connected with people uh, beforehand when you came to America, you know, so big props to you for knowing to do that because (laughs) I think a lot of people don't know that. It's like once they get to L.A., they're like, hey, uh, anybody in LA want to connect or I whatever? I think it's magically going to happen. Yeah. No, it's yeah. so hard to like make friends here in yeah. LA. Mm-hmm. So like most of my friends, I met them through Instagram before yeah. I even moved here. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I'm already like talking to mm-hmm. them like, hey, I'm moving to LA. I would, you know, I yeah. would love yeah. to meet up, mm-hmm. you yeah. know? And that's how yeah. you have to do it yeah, because like do. I said, it's, it's, I, I would say it's tougher once you're already here and then you start trying to build up that connection yeah. i i feel like once you you know once if you start meeting people beforehand you're putting out work and you're showcasing yourself of uh things that you've already done out here in la then you meet new people it's easier yeah you have to be out in la already yeah. and start doing work before or the people that you like new people that you link up with here in la know who you are because you know, uh, since I moved here, I've met so many other people. You know, uh, you were definitely one of the first people I actually met I know, out here. Yeah, yeah you were was, the first. I was like a week when you moved. Yeah, well, yeah, it was almost like a week or two after yeah. I moved out here. But we had already connected yeah. beforehand. You know, so it's like, but now I'm at. We've been out here almost four years. Mm-hmm. Uh, almost four years next year. That's it's like crazy. you know, so we've met so many people just from being out here. But it still took a while to build up you know, to that point where we can actually meet new people, you know? So like I said, that's a big tip to anybody that is trying to move to any other city, like start preparing beforehand instead of like, you know, once you get here, then start preparing because yeah, you want to, you want to already start making these connections so you can actually start doing the work once you get to the place that you're, you're trying to work in, you know? So big props to you again. Thank you. Um, You know, being a chef, it definitely takes a lot of work, of course. You know, I think we all know that, you know, I've seen a lot of TV shows and stuff like that with the you know master chef and all that it, it's a lot of hard work but what i want to know is like what made you actually choose the path of becoming a chef Be- just you know for that fact we all know it's a tough a tough job yeah so growing up um my grandfather he was a chef mm-hmm. and um I just like see him like cooking a lot during like family gathering or like any occasion that we have. He's the one that like who always like cook for us. Mm -hmm. And um, I at first I didn't even know that like he was a chef. Mm -hmm. It's just like oh like people saying like oh your grandpa he's like a great cook. Then like like later on my my mom told me that like oh do you know that your grandpa he like he was a chef Mm -hmm. he was a really good chef and then Uh she was like showing me pictures of my grandpa like at a restaurant Uh cooking and i was like wow that's like really cool yeah to you know it's such a like cool thing to do Mm -hmm. and um i kind of like like love like watching him cook that Mm -hmm. like oh i want to like try to do that yeah yeah like to cook yeah and um we started like like cooking at home just like helping him and like watching him do everything and then later on i decided that like i really want to like 
learn how to cook so mm-hmm. i went to culinary school but it was like funny to me because i was like from a really small island mm-hmm. and we have we have nothing we're not like like familiar with you know like yeah. um like like having culinary the, schools yeah or something. like yeah. culinary like ingredients mm-hmm. like i I didn't even know what parsley or yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. paprika. Yeah, I think a, yeah. lot of, you know, a lot of people in general just yeah. don't know that until yeah. you yeah. actually yeah. start practicing and that. Start cooking. Yeah, yeah, we just like, I, I, I only know like all this like Filipino vegetable mm-hmm. from our backyard yeah. Yeah. and fish. Mm-hmm. Like uh, we don't, we barely even eat like meat yeah. because, yeah. you know, we we mm. only have fish yeah right from dialing mm-hmm. yeah and like moving to manila which is a big city yeah it was like um uh shocked to me too that oh, like really? oh my gosh like yeah like all these like ingredients in front of me like mm-hmm. first day of culinary school i was like i've never seen this mm-hmm. yeah. before in my whole <laughs> life mm-hmm. what am i doing yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. so i was kind of like scared uh-huh. that like maybe I don't know what am I doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what um, island are you originally from? It, it's called Antique. Antique. It, okay. uh, it's very. It's not very like small. not a lot of people okay. know about it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. almost like that's almost like my dad. Um, uh, love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> love. What, what city is Pops from again? Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it's he. So he yeah. He's also from a smaller, a smaller city as well. You know. And uh, he he has told me about. It's almost the same exact thing. You know. I uh, I think I told you. I you you had asked me before. Oh, where's your which city is your dad from? And I was like, shoot, I forget what it was. Yeah. Uh, Ilo. No. 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 It's not. Uh, I feel like it's a common place though. I don't know. Cebu. No. Not. So, it's not a big city too. It's a very small. Very small. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Done it. Oh, <laughs> I forget what it's called but anyways you know even my dad has kind of mentioned to me about you know how things were as a kid you know growing up and you know seeing his uh he had more of a um what do you call it um what do you call the uh not like a nanai but um uh shoot the person like a butler or uh oh like uh like um yeah yeah uh, yeah 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 it's like uh, like someone who like looks yeah. up to you yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's and that's pretty much what my uh, my dad he also you know growing up as a kid he had like a yeah yeah and mm-hmm. everything and you know he was also telling me you know had, he had seen you know her uh mm-hmm. you know cooking stuff like that and um yeah so I'm I'm even still waiting for because going back back to the philippines i feel like it's a different way like the food is different like uh, the way of cooking is different you know and that's why i'm kind of like waiting to go back with rachel so because she knows obviously more than i do you know and i know it's a little bit different than being here so i'm definitely excited to get more insight on how the actual like filipino food is being cooked back home Uh versus you know being here in the states because everybody always says you know when you're cooking when you try to cook something authentic here in the states it's like no that's not authentic you have to literally go back to the origin like even mexican food people say Mm -hmm. oh no that's not how it is you know know, and stuff like that (laughs) so i definitely you know once i go back to the philippines eventually you know i want to see how things are actually done over there versus or compared to here in the states right and i'm not filipino i'm loud and viet but like i grew up with so many filipino people and you know everybody always comes up to me i work at the hospital and they're like are you filipino Uh, (laughs) or they automatically just start talking to me in tagalog yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, that's what happens. <laughs> that's, oh, that's all I know. I, I actually remember the city now. Uh, Kala Kala Oaken City. Oh, Kala Oaken. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he he um uh he said it's a very. Have you been there? Yeah, it's um I've never been, but like I've. It's heard a very about small it. place, yeah, right? Very okay. Small yeah. City. So that's what I kind of figured because he told me it was a very small, you know. Uh, it was, island. Yeah, yeah, not. It's not really an island. It's, it's a. It's province. part of Manila. It's like a province yeah. or something, oh, okay. a very small province or yeah. something like so that. So, did you also speak like a different uh, dialect? Because I know there's so yeah. many different. Yeah. So uh, I I speak a different dialect. Mm-hmm. We call it uh, Karaya. Karaya. Mm. Oh, okay. But it has more like similar to Spanish mm. like compared to Tagalog. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's why it was easier for you to speak It was speak so easy Spanish. for me. Yeah, yeah, like it was like surprised that like most words that like um, Mexican people were like saying and I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, it's the same 
same word in yeah. my dialect. Yeah, 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 yeah and yeah, they're yeah. like, "What, really? Yeah." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, everybody in the in the Philippines, like the general uh, language is already Tagalog, right? Tagalog. But and then everybody does have like their own dialect. Their own and dialect. if I remember hearing, I think there's over like what was it like a hundred a hundred or maybe even more dialects yeah in or i don't i don't know maybe if i'm thinking islands because i think there's like 700 there's seven thousand se- islands seven thousand hey, islands okay yeah shoot Say i didn't that. even know that i wonder if there's do you know if uh how many actual dialects are in the philippines though i am not familiar with how many dialects mm-hmm. we have but there's there's a lot a lot <laughs> so, <laughs> would you say over 20 and i just and i only know like one, two, three. <laughs> that's still a okay. lot, though. Yeah. That's still a lot yeah. because I mean that's like almost anybody else like here in the states that's know that knows English or their own language. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it. I think it's hard keeping up with uh, languages. Like for me, I, I'm good with just English. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously, you know, my dad he tried to he, he wanted to teach me da- uh, Tagalog when I was younger, but it, I mean, you know, he just didn't want to take that time, and yeah. because I was already growing up in a school where it's just all Americanized, and yeah. you know, he didn't really have the time to teach me Tagalog. That's why mm-hmm. he, originally he was trying to hire um, a teacher. So uh, at my elementary school, there's a Filipino teacher as well, and uh, he wanted to hire her so uh, I can take lessons with her to learn Tagalog and stuff. So. Uh, you mean I mean as of now like I don't know Tagalog I just know the cuss words and <laughs> you know Same. like the, the main things that I need to know yeah. and stuff like and that the food, yeah. and the food of course yeah, yeah and the yeah, food yeah, so the food. it's definitely important with with, yeah. with those things so. yeah so go back into you you know I noticed uh, one thing about restaurants majority of chefs are men you know do you ever feel like people treat you differently since you're a woman and um, you know do they uh, expect you to do certain roles as well being a, a female chef um, I've experienced that yeah. um, before um, which is kind of tough because like when for example when I go to like a job interview or it's mm-hmm. like my first time mm-hmm. my first day yeah. at the restaurant and then the chef will like see me and they'd be like oh what like the guys will be surprised to see you and yeah. like what i mean as well, you're a girl I, yeah like yeah. like how am i supposed to look like 250 pounds covered in tattoo yeah. and yeah. piercing yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. yeah that's like know? super yeah. uh, uh what do you uh, call it? Stereotypical. Uh, yeah, stereotypical. Yeah. Like, yeah. he's stereotyping yeah, you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially when it comes to a female... Yeah, when, when you na- uh, mentioned that description, when I do see a female chef, they're most likely like like that. Like, super tattooed, yeah, piercings. Piercing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. so that's that's crazy to even to even think about. And, you know, as a female chef, do you, all, do you get put into that position where you feel like you have to fight for your place? as a, a f- female or work harder to prove to the men yes you know? yes yes yeah. i have to um the first time i moved here i got that job in beverly hills i remember the chef like like oh you can be on the salad mm. and i was like why Meh. because i'm a woman yeah. like i want to be on the saute which is like one Cookie, of the yeah. hardest yeah, 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 station yeah. where you're like like do all the cooking you're like mm. on the heat i'm like yeah. oh i just feel like that the pots and pans are too heavy for you and i'm like just give me one day <laughs> yeah, me. and i'll show it to you that yeah. i can do it yeah. yeah 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 so so he gave me a chance and then um i just showed that like i can yeah. do this like yeah, yeah. how this yeah you know like these guys mm-hmm. and then after that i just like kept Going like up, working yeah. on my way up and like oh my gosh she can do saute uh-huh. and I'm like I can do grill too mm-hmm. and right, they're right. like oh grill I'm yeah, like yeah, yeah. like for me on grill yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just like keep like working yeah. my way up yeah, yeah and that's how you gotta do it yeah, you yeah. know another thing I I, I, re- I didn't really think about until you kind of mentioned that was mm-hmm. another stereotype is I you know I'm gonna separate the two you know of course you have restaurants and stuff but and then you have at home cooking I feel like another stereotype is the women are always cooking for the men at home yeah. mm-hmm. so I don't know why like men would be like oh no yeah, we, we can't trust you know at a restaurant mm-hmm. like no we can't trust you like when majority of the time it is a woman that is also kind Kind of cooking, cooking for the man at home you know yeah. so that's why i feel like women we, we all know women can cook like we yeah, all right. know so why would 
you know, like a, a chef or something doubt that in a restaurant, even yeah. though we know they can definitely cook. Well, you if know, you're like, thinking about it from a stereotypical aspect too, they probably look at her, she's short, she's small, yeah, she's small. Asian, she's like, mm-hmm. she's like, oh, we need to put her in the salads where she's not going to be hurt or, yeah. you know, something <laughs> yeah. easy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we know why she's here, but then, yeah. then when they find out that, you know, she could hang yeah. Yeah. and, you know, it, um, it really blows everyone away because yeah. a lot, not a lot of people, especially in America, expect, you know, such a big personality from a small you know yeah. package yeah, 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 yeah. no I, I definitely agree with that yeah. but it's it's still like you know I know you know even for me you know when it came to cooking I learned from my mom right. you know my mom uh you know uh, my mom learned from pretty much my grandpa mm-hmm. which you know my dad's had learned that she she's white and she knows how to make Filipino food that's you know awesome. yeah you know and that's the thing it's like even like I've, I've let my Filipino friends try my mom's food and you know how does it taste it's like oh it's really good yeah that was made by a white person <laughs> you know so <laughs> that's how it is you know I'm that's why I'm saying like women in general they're just really good at, at cooking you know yeah. and uh, that's why I find it so weird that when you go into a setting where you're you know of course uh, you know competing against all these chefs that are men yeah. but yet like women have been cooking for years or centuries and you know stuff like that so i don't know why i see it as a big competition in right. you know the the chef world and stuff mm-hmm. like that so i guess that's just one thing to kind of think about or because yeah. i think when you i don't know maybe maybe it is different you know versus it's like a such a stereotypical thing when you you think of an actual profession versus cooking at home. Yeah. It's like there's a separation issue there. Yeah, right, But it's like, sure. it's, I feel, there's no difference. Yeah, there's yeah, like there's no not. difference. That's yeah. what I'm saying. There's really no difference. If you know how to cook at home and it's really good, you can yeah. definitely do it in a professional, professional environment. Kitchen, yeah. yeah, so mm. that's why I don't really know why it's judged so much. And right. that's another thing too, um, now that you mention it is, uh, the TV shows, you definitely do see more men, men on yeah. their master chefs and versus like women yeah. and stuff. So, yeah, just in general, yeah. I, yeah, you know, I I think it's too generalized at that mm-hmm. point where it's like, you know what, like you need to let more females and women in here because mm-hmm. they have been doing this for years yeah. for men, you know, yeah. in general. It's like very surprising to me. And right now, I'm working at a sushi restaurant. We mm-hmm. just opened a, a sushi restaurant in Culver City, oh, okay. and. Every time I work in the sushi bar, mm. some people are like still surprised to see a female chef mm. making sushi because in Japan, Japan yeah. Yeah. women are not allowed to oh, really? make I sushi. Didn't. See, I didn't even know that yeah, too. Yeah, because it's crazy because they said that like women have uh, warmer like temperature compared to men, so they're just <laughs> supposed to stay home, oh. take care of the baby oh, instead yeah. of like making sushi because they're like cooking the fish yeah, yeah, yeah. with their hands yeah, 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 yeah see that's another weird yeah, thing i mean you know i like i said i i think all cultures have some kind of weird um cultural like, you know thing but yeah. we are in the states so it's like yeah. it, you, it, you got to treat it a little bit different you know yeah. like we are in the states where it, it's a place everybody kind of does everything like yeah. i definitely understand you know culture and um, how everybody will, you know, kind of, re- but it's like you're in a different place, yeah. you're in a different setting. So you do have to allow others to kind of work their way in. And, you know, like I said, big props to you to even enter something like that where you know where the culture is so different, yeah. especially from the Philippines and stuff like that. So, you know, big props again. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, we mentioned, we did mention earlier now that we're kind of on the topic, you are the head chef. Uh, you, you are the head chef at like some of LA's biggest restaurants like how was it how was it um how hard was it to get to that point like becoming the head chef um it was at first when i started working at this restaurant i have no like experience when mm. like in making sushi mm. and i i was very honest with them like oh i have no experience in sushi but i am willing to learn mm-hmm. yeah. and i think it's a very um uh g- it's a great opportunity for me another skill mm-hmm. set mm-hmm. for me as a chef to right. learn how to make sushi yeah. mm-hmm. and they're like oh we would love to have you um they were saying that like we want you to focus on more like hot food like ronda the mm-hmm. hot kitchen i was like yeah i'm cool with that like also learning sushi at the same time mm-hmm. and then oh my gosh it's just like took me two weeks to learn the sushi and I was like one of the fastest 
like yeah. <laughs> like sushi yeah, <laughs> yeah. Chef, like sushi for chef. yeah sushi chef that yeah. they have and i was like the only female mm. chef there as well yeah. mm. so when we um opened it was like a pop-up at first so when we opened the bigger restaurant the one that we have now uh i got promoted to head chef r- mm-hmm. right away because okay. i was like running the hot kitchen and also yeah. i can do sushi at the same time mm-hmm. and okay. they were like oh i've never seen like someone learn so fast yeah. Yeah, yeah like when it comes to making sushi and she makes she also makes the best like sushi they're just like so yeah. pretty yeah yeah, yeah they're yeah. saying oh it's like advantage for her to like have her small hands because <laughs> yeah. she can make all this sushi yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. we gotta give you yeah. a round of applause yeah. for that you know like i said big, big congrats to making making it to that point you know yeah. you're breaking yeah. through those barriers yeah, and yeah. Breaking yeah. boundaries that women can do this yeah. like yeah. honestly so yeah. like i said once again big props to you so, yeah you for know. sure yeah. you know and you know i want to ask too like as a chef who like cooks all day for a living do you ever f- get tired of cooking when you actually go home and like have to cook for yourself <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes yes i do um when every time i come home i don't yeah. have the energy to cook anymore mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but thank god because my boyfriend he's a oh, good okay. cook as uh, well hey, 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 shout hey, out john hey, let's go holding it right. down in the home <laughs> yes. yes so um, he, um he's he's the one who's always um like cook for me when yeah, i get home from nice. work i'm like so tired yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like it's funny because like the other day we were like talking like oh like you thought that like oh uh, um i have a chef girlfriend that mm. like who can cook for me all the time like well jokes on you <laughs> 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 i don't have time to cook yeah, anymore yeah, yeah, yeah. but no, like yeah, yeah it's just, exactly <laughs> so, i mean that's almost like me and rachel like i literally you know i i cook pretty much for her as well i was like Love, I mean, it'd be nice if you can also kind of learn to cook, you know, sometimes, but, you know, I, I'm still, I still love cooking for you no matter what, you know, and yeah, like I said, it, for me, cooking has always just, uh, it's it's kind of been, I'm not a chef or, you know, John has definitely gotten into, you yeah. know, more, I, I wouldn't say. Yeah, I mean, I meal prep, you know, yeah. Monday to Friday, yeah, you know, good. for weight loss, of course, yeah, but weight loss. during that time, you know, I've experimented with so many different yeah. recipes, so like I'm kind of becoming a chef almost yeah You're yeah learning. yeah i'm learning and all yeah. the garnishes and you know what mixes well with with what and so you know, so it's a fun experience yeah i mean for, for yeah sure. that's even for me like you know i i don't i just know how to like follow directions and yeah. recipes you know it's easy to follow directions and recipes um if it's there in front of me yeah. so as long as it's there in front of me i can definitely cook you know i feel yeah. like a lot of other people for some reason just cannot follow, follow directions, directions. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. like would you say for you like kind of when you started cooking was there directions or recipes that you kind of needed to follow and like you would um uh step up every yeah, single time yeah so when i came to culinary school they like give us recipes and direction how to do things mm-hmm. like how mm-hmm. to cook things step by step and like later on you just like know how to like you familiarize like everything yeah. and later on oh i don't need a recipe anymore yeah. you just kind of like eyeballing yeah, 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 yeah. see that's another thing i feel like i'm scared of too is like you know what if i have a pinch or a couple pinches of like salt or you know one of these other ingredients and it's too much that's why for me i still follow like you know like a <laughs> tablespoon or a half a tablespoon <laughs> yeah. just just so <laughs> i can get the yeah, yeah, idea because like i said i'm not to that experience yet where it's yeah. like I know I can grab this much and throw it in and it's yeah. still gonna taste good and yeah. you know stuff like that it's still I, I feel like just the measuring cups and all that mm-hmm. work perfectly but it also me, too you know? like following a recipe can be pros and cons because your palate might be different than that you know true. the person yeah, yeah, who yeah. made the recipe book mm-hmm. so like you kind of need to adjust to your tongue yeah. if you're yeah. gonna eat it or like whoever you're serving it yeah. to yeah, yeah, yeah no yeah, that so. is true that's true well you know moving on we do have a little game that we play on the artistry drop yes. it's called artistry roulette so john's like gonna that. explain it to you yeah so here on the artistry drop we want to bring something new and exciting to the show so today we're gonna play a game called artistry roulette and here is how the game is gonna go so you're gonna choose a number between one and ten, and each number that goes over 15 seconds um, you, will cost you a sip of that drink. Um, so you, but you'll only be able to answer a total of six questions out of the ten. Um, Pearl, <laughs> are you ready? 
So hold up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so pretty uh, much all your number. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna choose a number between one and ten. One and ten. Yeah. And then you're only gonna be answering six, six of them. Total. Right. Total. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So and this cool. is the artistry roulette. We kind of just recently came up with this game. It's more of a way for people to get to know you as an artist outside of your artistry. Like ju it, just something a little bit more for fun. You know, like knowing uh what kind of music you like or you know something like that so mm -hmm. yeah that's why we yeah. were like you know what this game might be fun to develop exactly so, so, so we're gonna ask you like questions like who super fun yeah. outside of the box you know yeah rather than just going off of you know your, your artistry your artistry yeah yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. i like that all right so number one through ten like what would you choose um three three so okay where else would you be if you weren't in la and why and the timer starts now, now. Australia. Australia. Yeah, so. Okay, why? why? Um, Australia was my first choice, honestly, before I came to LA. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, they have a really good food scene as well. Mm -hmm. And Australia is just a really beautiful place. Oh, yeah, it definitely to, looks beautiful. Yeah. To yeah. live. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and it's pretty close to the Philippines. It's just like oh, an yeah. 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 yeah, our fry is not too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not too bad. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, you got almost 30 seconds. Yes, yeah, so you have to take a sip. <laughs> of that drink. Yes, yeah, of that drink. <laughs> the timer is 15 seconds. 15 seconds. You got to beat, beat the 15 that. second. It has to be 15 seconds. Yeah. Or lower. Or lower. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, so one through 10 again, you already chose number three. Five. Five, okay. So we'll, we'll see how you do with this one. It might be easy. Your favorite Filipino dish to cook and why? And the timer starts now. Filipino adobo. Why? It reminds me of my mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that works. Yeah, that, that works. works. That, that works. works. Nine, seconds. Nine seconds. So you're good. You don't yes, have to take a yes. sip of that drink. Yes, okay. adobo is so, the number one. Yeah. Adobo I, I is really adobo good. I, you know what? For me, when it comes to adobo, I am kind of picky, though, because yeah, of course. yeah, yeah it too. depends on the meat used. You know, yeah. like I feel like there are so many different ways to cook adobo. I like I said, I love adobo, but it just really depends on the meat used. Right. And I, I cooked adobo for all of them before, yeah. but I was like, I, I gotta start like uh, playing with different meats because yeah. I think it was a little bit too hard at one yeah. point. And there's this really good. I I still don't know how he cooked it, but um. This Shoot, other, I should make a dope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I should other, try it. This other, uh, um, one of my coworkers back home in Seattle, he used to make this really good pork adobo, and I've always I asked him for the yeah, pork adobo is the way to go. You just and have pork adobo. You know? it's, it's, so it's like yeah. a spicy pork adobo. Oh, I love spicy. I, I yeah. don't know how he did it, but every time he made it, I was like, oh my god, this shit is yeah. so good. Like I, I, I can't figure out how he did it, but. It was like the spiciness was just perfect. Mm. It wasn't too spicy. It wasn't too like mild. It was just like in the middle. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> You're gonna do it. All right, we'll I'm see. I'm gonna do it. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Challenge yeah. accepted. You, have, you haven't made a uh, Filipino yeah, food have, dish before, yeah, so we'll, we'll have to oh, see. You should. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have to see. Okay, so going back into it, one through ten, you already got three and five. So what's your next one? Nine. Nine. Okay, what is your favorite place to go around in LA? And the timer starts now. The beach. The beach. Which why? beach? Um, Malibu. And why? It's a very romantic place to be. It is nice. Though. It <laughs> is nice. Ten okay. seconds. Ten She's seconds. getting better. She's ten getting seconds. better. Let's go. Okay, so one through ten again. You already chose three, five, and nine. Seven. Seven. All right. What is your favorite music artist today, and why? It's a hard question. <laughs> 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 Music artist. I know many. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It, it, the timer's still going. You're gonna have to take a drink then. Doja Cat. Just kidding. Doja Cat. Doja Cat. Oh. No, no, no. Oh, okay, yeah. you, you gotta take yeah. us in. Yeah, it's okay. It's so, hard. It's a hard no, question. It's a hard question. It's a hard question. And it's nope. under pressure. Yes, it is under pressure. Okay, so you got one more question to go. You already choose three, five, seven, and five. So. You already said five. Oh, the, wait, did I say Yeah. Dang, the drink got me. Okay. <laughs> what, what is the next one, then? Um, I don't really know. The, I picked three... You picked one, three, seven... Oh, yeah, that's what it was. One, yeah. One, three, oh, seven... Nine. Yes, yes, yes. Seven... And nine. You already chose nine, nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And five, yeah. So now you got one more. Um, Let's do... Eight. Eight. If you could have a superpower, what would it be and why? Timer starts now. 
机 teleport， so I can go home anytime. That's a good answer. Six seconds. That was quick. That's a good answer. Actually, yes, I would love to teleport too. Yeah, I know. I would. I would love to teleport, and I would also love to fly. Fly. I feel like those would be like the two powers I would love yeah. to actually teleport have. Teleport and fly. Yeah, teleport and fly. Just yeah, because. I'm scared of heights, so I don't know. If I, can fly. <laughs> I, I don't mean, know if I can do it. I mean, that is true. That is yeah. true. Well, Pearl, thank you again for thank playing you. artist trivia. Like you killed yes. it. It's so fun. Thank you. You know, we you know we thought it would be fun to kind of include something, so it's not always serious about your yeah. artistry. Yeah. Like for sure. at least get people involved in uh, letting people know outside of your artistry right? yeah. what you're kind of involved with. So mm. once again, thank you for thank you. playing. No, we Thank you. It was it. fun. Okay, we're gonna dive right back in, guys. Um, get into pro story, but you know, as a chef, do you have plans at all? Like maybe starting your own restaurant in the future, or are you kind of more content with just staying as like maybe an employee at like some of these really nice restaurants? Um, we, Jen and I, kind of talk about it that like we want to have our own restaurant in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't know yet, but we would really. It's definitely love to, a plan. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely yeah. a plan mm-hmm. to have to have our own restaurant. Like when you do, so, so when you do uh, plan to have your own restaurant, what kind of food would it be? Like, would it be a mixture of maybe Filipino food or? Yes, yes, absolutely. I like. I've been to a lot of like Filipino restaurants here mm-hmm. in LA, and I've never seen, um, like. It's always like a like like a cafeteria style, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I want to make it into like much more elevated like yeah. Filipino high food, end. like high end. Yeah. So like it like attracts like other people to yeah. like oh you know like it looks interesting or it looks mm. nice mm-hmm. on a plate. It's not just like you know like yeah. The, a coffee chair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks more appetizing. Yeah, to right, people. Yeah. presentable. Yeah, yeah presentable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's and, yeah. And your presentation, like you know, I've seen your fo- the photos you've taken of the presentation of your your food, and it looks really good. So <laughs> I, trust me, like if you guys were to come up with a restaurant including Filipino food and whatever other, we will be there for yes. sure. Yeah. Because, yeah. Like, <laughs> like I said, you know, I I definitely agree. It's hard to find a lot of good Filipino restaurants. No, yeah, too. we've been to I mm-hmm. think a couple already and the food is good but i still don't know like what authentic filipino food tastes like yeah that's why you know i do got to go back home you know one of these times with rachel and yeah. you know so i can actually taste what authentic filipino food tastes like because yeah. of course i know you would ha- definitely have more of an idea of how to cook more authentic you know out yeah. here and i'm sure there are uh, quite a f- handful of people you know uh, or they're filipinos that also know how to cook authentic but it's like not in a restaurant yeah you know it's like it's still a different way of cooking filipino yeah. food so once you do once you guys decide to open a, a filipino restaurant or whatever kind of restaurant we will be there for sure yeah, yeah for sure. Like, you guys know you yes know, like, definitely <laughs> thank you thank you thank you, you know I, I i'm definitely looking forward to that yeah. you know what is the hardest part about being a chef and like have you had any regrets of getting into the culinary or is this just truly something you love? It, I really love cooking. It's mm. more of my passion. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people like asked me like if chefs make a lot of money. Right. Honestly, no. Yeah, you you, yeah. you got to love what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Like if you're doing it for money, then it's it's not for you. Yeah. Like to me, it's a it's a passion, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So like, I go to work every day, I don't feel like I'm going to work mm-hmm. because I love what I'm doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, being a chef, it's tough because like most of your days, like you just on the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Right. You, you don't celebrate all the holidays, you just yeah. you missed all the important events, right. you know, like family gathering, birthday, wedding, all of that because you're working all the time right so it's also like uh you have to love it because you have to sacrifice you're going to sacrifice a lot of things like mm-hmm. not yeah. seeing your friends your family yeah. you know your loved one yeah i i gotta mm-hmm. give you a round of applause because yes. that answer actually made me smile because mm-hmm. you know when it comes to your passion 
you should not think about the money. The money right. will come eventually, yeah. you know, but think about what you're actually working hard towards, you know? I yeah. mean, you know, with me and John, we've been out here for a, a, a few years already and we're still working really hard into where we're trying to advance. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. The money is there because of our, our obviously, you know, our full-time jobs. Yeah. We got to have full-time jobs no matter what yeah. to be able to afford things like, you know, the artistry drop stuff and other things, rent and, you know, all yeah. that. And Mills, that's, yeah. yeah, that's a lot of things that some creators and artists don't talk about. Right. So I really love the fact that you brought up it. Ne- you need to be doing your career for the love of it yeah. and not for the money because yeah. the money will come eventually. Just guys, like, focus on what you're trying to create, you know? So yeah, exactly. I, I really love that answer. Definitely yeah. one of the best <laughs> answers we've had on here. On <laughs> Super Artist inspirational. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. So aside from, like, cooking, you know, I also found your old YouTube channel, like, five <laughs> four oh five gosh, years ago me. you know I, I did as well i did as well you know no. i saw you know you did a lot of like makeup and hair tutorials were you ever thinking about becoming like a makeup artist before like becoming a chef no no not, it was just fun it was just a like a fun uh, thing for me to do oh, okay like you know on the side yeah oh, okay um i love like doing like hair color i used to have crazy hair color no mm. like used to be my trademark yeah okay like people like like they knew you for it already they, yeah. Yeah. what colors yeah uh a lot of, like purple pink green oh really blue, vibrant like all that yeah. oh, like okay. crazy hair mm-hmm. color yeah um but yeah it was it was fun just yeah, to yeah. do yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever thought about like going back into YouTube for a lot of your like culinary stuff or even getting back into like makeup or, you know, um, doing hair? I would love to do some like cooking, yeah. Yeah, like cooking, cooking uh, videos mm-hmm. like on TikTok yeah. or it's just like hard to find time. Like, yeah. You're, yeah. Like, you're busy like running a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. And I agree. Like, I feel like if you were to do some kind of TikTok videos, you will blow up like you you, i I would say of course you know it's all hard for all of us to find time because even for us you know we're still trying to find time from aside from our full-time full-time jobs to you know create artistry job uh create other content outside of that you know but i feel like if you can take you know maybe an hour out of your day to create something super simple all it takes is one video on tiktok to just go viral yeah Yeah. (laughs) have you thought like if you were to create some tiktok content have you thought about what you would possibly do i would love to do more of like um cooking but like also like sushi (laughs) and yeah it's just like sushi is like really a fun thing to do so actually you know a question on that like what kind of also got you into sushi? To me, I just want to uh, to learn another like skill. Mm-hmm. It's good on my resume, and it's a really good skill to have. Yeah. I and so I was like telling my boss the other day. Um, I was telling him that like, hey, it's my four year anniversary mm-hmm. in LA, and it crazy to me to think that I'm doing sushi now because yeah. mm-hmm. like I think like a couple of months ago, like. A year ago someone asked me like oh so what kind of food do you do i'm like i pretty much do everything except japanese or mm-hmm. sushi yeah. and i said i've never like i can't imagine myself doing sushi mm-hmm. and be on a like japanese like like kitchen and like yeah, yeah. work with japanese like men and yeah. i can't understand yeah, it yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. it's funny that like oh now you're like surprised that like doing sushi with all these white guys white chef yeah. <laughs> you know? and yeah, now yeah. i'm like yeah. yeah it's crazy it's like such a fun thing to learn yeah and now i'm just I have a, a, another skill as yeah. a chef. Yeah. You know? and, and that's yeah. how you build your resume. I feel like, you know, you wanting to go out and venture and learn all these different techniques of culinary or, you know, different uh, um, religions or, or I mean, yeah. like not religions, but uh, cultures. Diff- cultures of cultures, cooking yeah. and, you know, stuff like that. Like, it's really cool because that's definitely how you are building mm-hmm. your resume when it comes to a chef and yeah. a cook and stuff like that so yeah like big ups to you on yeah. wanting to experiment you know yeah. outside of things that you already know how to cook 
that's how you are gonna like literally blow up like no that is yeah and like how do you enjoy being a sushi chef more than you know being a regular chef because i imagine it would also be less work since uh you know when you work at a normal restaurant you're making so many different types of food Mm -hmm. rather than being a sushi chef you're only doing sushi and maybe some hot things on the side Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah um to me it's like very two different two different worlds two yeah. different worlds because mm-hmm. like when you're in the hot kitchen you're like making all this like hot play yeah. and probably you're, sweating yeah sweating yeah, yeah. and when you're in sushi it's cold it's not yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're it's chilling, yeah, you're, chilling not, yeah, yeah. you're just chilling you're like making sushi yeah, yeah um but when i'm like working sushi as well i'm just like like i love doing it uh-huh. But like when it's like really really busy, busy so like yeah. on a Saturday or we have like a big party, mm. sometimes I'm just like, oh my gosh, like nonstop sushi. I've never done so much sushi yeah. in my whole life. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah, gonna yeah, stop? Yeah. I'm like done. Can I just yeah. like go in the hot kitchen yeah. and just like do something yeah. else? Yeah. And like, but but at the end of the night, it's like it's very um. Uh, like it's a nice feeling that like, it's like rewarding. It's mm-hmm. rewarding yeah. to like think that like wow that was a lot of sushi. Yeah. <laughs> so you know one question I do have is like yeah. because we didn't really get to this is as a sushi chef, what is your typical job? Like are you the one to are you still cooking a lot of or making a lot of sushi or are you also directing other people like do this, do this? Like what what is a typical um responsibility of like the head chef of a like sushi a sous chef yeah mm-hmm. so i i am one of the head chef mm-hmm. so i pretty much like like just flow or like i do how about different areas and, yeah yes like so mm-hmm. like there are days that like i'm um, like running the hot kitchen mm-hmm. there are days that like i'm just like in sushi the whole day yeah. and, but and also there are days that just like i'm running around like okay mm-hmm. i'm making sushi and then yeah. i run into the hot kitchen and yeah. I'm like how and then also like sending out plates like mm-hmm. making sure they go to the right table yeah, yeah. like do ordering all mm-hmm. that stuff okay so it's 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 a lot it's, of, it's like a, ver- a variation of different ver- things yeah different mm-hmm. things so when it comes to like the actual sushi making like are you usually there to like to make the sushi itself make sushi itself how how long does it take you to make like one roll of sushi? Well, she said she's the fastest. <laughs> well, that, what's the time then? So I'm like, I'm making roll. I, that's a good question because I've never timed myself. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe like. 10 seconds? 10 seconds. Maybe, 15 that's crazy. maybe like a, a minute. minute. That's yeah. still yeah. crazy yeah. Be, to make like a, a whole roll of sushi. Yeah. yeah. Well, when I make like uh, sushi, I just don't make one i make mm-hmm. four or six at the same time yeah. so it's crazy <laughs> that's crazy it's crazy yeah. Yeah. yeah so that so you're making like so when you say about minute is that still a minute per roll yeah i think so yeah that's still yeah. quick though that, yeah. like that yeah, yeah because i mean you know me and him uh back home we uh what is that sushi place we we gone to the all you can eat sushi um i forgot what is, what the is one in renton the one I mentioned? Yeah. Uh, all you can eat? Yeah, the one that we used to always go to. They cook and they, they do the sushi in front of you. Um, I like don't a, like a oh hand my God. Roll. Yeah. yeah, so a anyways, they, like, like, you literally just order on the spot and they do it all in front of you. And sometimes uh-huh. it just takes a little bit of time for them to actually do it. So no, they do. the fact that you're able to do it within almost a minute. It's like, you already know what you need to do. Like, <laughs> yeah. Trapper sushi. Trapper, yeah, Trapper, yeah, Trapper, there Trapper you go. There. Yeah, it's, so, a Seattle, yeah, it's a Seattle. Yeah, it's a Seattle-based like yeah. uh, sushi place that we used to always go to. And yeah, like it, it was all you can eat and pretty much, you know, you, you they, you know, uh, you get a whole roll and stuff like that, but it takes time. I also think right. it takes time just because of the amount of people yeah. there. Yeah. But even still, like we're sitting in front of them and we're seeing how long it could right. possibly take them to make a roll. But I think they take a lot longer than a minute. So the fact yeah. that you can almost do it in a minute, we got to give you a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> because that means Quick. people will get their food quicker yeah. than yeah. waiting you know, so long. But also, stuff, like, know? that just shows how passionate you are yeah. about what you're doing because you care about how fast they're going to get it. Yeah. When normal chefs, they'll be like, oh, you know, they'll get it when I when I get a chance. Yeah. You know? and so they'll do it. So yeah. yeah. To me, as a chef, um, I always, like, tell my staff that... Um, I just don't want to, like, send, like, food as fast as... 
you I can, can or yeah. like even it's all about them, quality right? I also want you guys to make sure that the quality yeah. and the right. flavor mm-hmm. is good, there yeah. exactly. not just like oh I brought the food out in yeah. just five minutes right, right. Yeah, yeah. like I don't care yeah. as yeah. long as it it has to taste good it has to look good mm-hmm. the quality should be there because to me they paid for this exactly. like yeah. you know like when when my staff like send out a plate and I'm not happy with it and I always tell them do you know how much this cost this yeah. is a $35 meal yeah, yeah. and I have I would want them to be happy and exactly. they right. can always come back. Yeah. But if you just give them like, you know, a super half quick, ass, yeah, super happen. quick half yeah. ass yeah. Yeah. play, they're not going to be happy that's and true. it's not that's worth like, their money, you know? Yeah, no, and sure. I think yeah. that, yeah, that's what, you know, makes a lot more customers happy is the fact that you are thinking more of the quality than the quantity. Yeah. Right. Because I feel like there are maybe some like, just watching movies or shows, yeah. you know, I'm basing it off that because, of course, like, I only know just a couple of chefs, you know, uh, one of my other best friends back home and you. Like, I, I really don't know much other chefs out there, but, you know, just kind of basing it off of uh, what I've seen on TV shows and stuff like that, I feel like some people do kind of rush. Yeah. It's like, we just got to get this done. Let's get this done because they're they're under a, a, a time limit. Yeah. You know, they're like, we just got to get this out there. And, yeah. you know, and then, of course, it's being half-assed to the yeah. point where it's like, okay, these customers just aren't enjoying their meal. Yeah. You know, yeah. so the fact that you are also able to kind of maintain, um, you know, your speed but also the quality, quality of the food yeah, yeah. that's a good that's yeah. a good um, yeah. uh skill to have yes you main, know? main props to you for sure yeah because yeah. yeah. you yeah. definitely you know it shows in your work and your work ethic too and the fact that you went from you know being uh, a, a normal chef to going now being into a sushi chef you know and breaking the boundaries i, I feel like if you express that through tiktok and social media like you would blow up <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. like i said you you should definitely take up like tiktok eventually and you know just showcase some of your recipes because there are quite a few uh oh shoot i forget his name um but you know i've talked to him a couple times his, his name is matt i believe on instagram he's he he's also another chef and he does like shows how he does these recipes and yeah. like i said i guarantee you if you start getting into that niche like on instagram yeah. or tiktok you are gonna blow up yeah. especially yeah. the fact that you're a female because mm-hmm. of course it's been such a thing now where it's stereotyping where men are just these chefs and stuff yeah. right. but women are not you know so yeah. you got to be one of the first few yeah. to go in step in and be like women do this shit yeah. like yeah. You you're making boundaries yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. in the industry without actually promoting it yes. you're, you're doing it already yeah. in there so if you actually send that message and yeah. brought it into light i think a lot of women would resonate would with love that it. too yeah. they would love it so pearl yeah. you need to definitely do that soon I yeah. Share. Yeah, I share. Share. Yeah. definitely yeah. do that I'll soon take, i'll take you guys advice yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I, yes. like i said you i would love yeah. I, i'm sure rachel would love watching that too oh yes yeah. <laughs> because you know she like i said she's also you know she's trying to get into cooking and you know i'll try to uh help her out with whatever she's trying to do and but i also think women just in general are gonna love the fact seeing another creative or you know another artist that is in that field of culinary and cooking show them the way instead of following the men because of course women kind of gravitate towards you towards each other that's just how it is so i think you definitely should take the initiative Mm -hmm. and just be one of that first Female. It'll be a strong message. For yes, sure. it'll be yeah. a strong message yeah. for all the females out there because females yeah. just and gravitate who, towards And who knows, you, know, you know, know, through that, you know, success of social media, that might jumpstart your career for, you know, you're not only being a chef, but also starting your own business exactly. as well. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. You never know. So I, I'm definitely yeah. excited to see where you do take this. I should. You know, yeah. I, you, yeah. you, you definitely have to start at that point and you know see where you go because i definitely think you're going to be successful in that yeah, so, for sure yeah pearl well yes. you know we're coming to the end of our podcast thank you once again for coming here it's great to see you and thank you, you know, for see, having me guys yeah of course, of course. Yes. It, it's great seeing where you've you know how, how long or how where you yeah how far you've yeah, come you know <laughs> the drink's so, getting the to drink it. is getting to <laughs> yeah. me a little bit but no I, like i said it's good seeing you and how far you've come from you know coming from different places and now to being just a head chef so i'm definitely yes. proud of you and thank you know you. thank you once again yes. for coming on but we do sure. on honor street drop we do leave the artist to drop some advice to other people that are listening out there so what kind of advice would you give to anybody out there trying to become a chef or even a model i know we didn't really talk about modeling too much but you know definitely drop some advice as well on that i think that um 
you can do anything you want to be mm-hmm. as long as you know you set your your goal and just keep working hard mm-hmm. towards that goal mm-hmm. yeah. and you know you'll be crushing it for yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's all you need yeah. honestly yeah, exactly. like that's yeah. all it is guys it's like, all about hard work it is yeah. it's all about hard work but also i think it w- would be good advice especially from our conversation is just like don't be um, discouraged by other people telling you you can't do something mm-hmm. because you, 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 you pro- yeah. you've proven you proved that. It, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah. Um, you know, another thing, like I said, it's like you as, as a female, I feel like you would be big in, you know, the female community as far mm-hmm. as when it, ta- when it comes to being a chef because once again, I just feel like, fe- uh, you know, women, females, they, they would all just gravitate towards that because yeah. everybody in the women community or female community supports each other in mm-hmm. you know these kind of struggles where it's like they're being stereotypical against men and yeah. but you are proving that women can do this yeah. and you right. know that's what like i said you need to put that out on for social for media sure. so that's yes. that's what i would say that's what even for our advice <laughs> yeah. to you you need to start doing that because for sure. yeah it, it would definitely be big it and i big. i think you're gonna get big with that so i need to you yeah, need to you. You need yes to. yes uh, and what what other uh shout outs would you give to our viewers or shout outs you want to give out to to people yeah, to anyone yeah anybody yeah. anyone who has helped you along yeah. the way Wait, what you like yeah. uh i mean of course you gotta give a shout out to john <laughs> shout out to you, my boyfriend yes. Yes. the best supporting boyfriend hey let's go let's go <laughs> Yeah, he um, helped. he's like the best um, ever because like he's the one who uh, like support me and like mm-hmm. help me mm-hmm. like reach some of my goals, yeah. especially so, in this yeah. industry. Yeah. He's the yeah. one who motivates me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any, fa- any family members? Family friends? Friends? My mom, yeah. you're yeah. watching. <laughs> All the way from the Philippines. Hey, <laughs> let's go. Yeah, big shout out to you guys. Big shout out to John. You know, always yes. keeping you know pearl and you know her dreams going so yes. uh where where can um viewers find you on social media come again sorry oh, where can viewers yeah. find you on social media uh yeah. you guys can uh check my instagram at pearl Steffi, mm-hmm. um and also my facebook page mm-hmm. uh same pearl Steffi. yeah okay. and yeah. Uh, and we will always drop you know uh their social media in the description box below so guys yes. no worries you can check out pearl on instagram and guys also try to force her to make like a tiktok and get yes. these these things out there for hey, all the women on. out there you know because we come know on. she can definitely do it yes. so thank pearl you. once again thank you for coming on the artist you drop we appreciate you thank being you here this was definitely me. yeah thank of you course. for being our first chef yes on the oh, show it's it's Let's such go. an honor to Th- be here yeah thank you thank you know thank we're, you. we're definitely looking forward to you know possibly bringing some other chefs and getting their perspectives but you are the first one to break that barrier thank so yes. once again thank it's you my for pleasure hey yeah, yeah. Thank you for coming on. All right, guys. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, it's Artistry Drop. If you're not following us on Instagram, you can find us at the Artistry Drop. And if you prefer just listening, you can stream all our episodes on all major podcast platforms. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Yay! Peace.